Welcome to today's lecture. We have talked about um, tectonic plates. We've talked about uh, the way that they move and we talked about their borders. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how they move. And if you take a look here, you can kind of see um, the way that the different tectonic plates are currently moving. and. Uh, in the 70s, science, scientists uh, had devised some different ways to really study the, the rate of movement and measure the movements of tectonic plates. Um, and uh, actually here between North America and Europe, they've measured uh, that it is they are separating at a rate of about two and a half centimeters per year. Um, and then you can see here that this would be about five centimeters per year. Um, but one of the ways that they measure that is they use GPS satellites and they will mark a place and then study it over a few years. And so uh, this is kind of the current um, model of tectonic plate movement and uh, just kind of what they expect it to do over the coming years. And uh, if you look at kind of the history of tectonic plates, you can see where they had to start somewhere. And the current model suggests that the tectonic plates actually started out as one uh, giant continent uh, called Pangaea. And Pangaea actually comes from two Greek words, pan meaning all, and Gaia meaning earth. Um, and then it was surrounded by a, uh, a one giant ocean called Panthalassa. Uh, and again, from the word pan meaning all, and thalassa meaning sea. Um, so it, the entire land mass would have been one, uh, they refer to it as a supercontinent. And the evidence for this actually comes uh, not just from seafloor spreading and, you know, the shapes of the different uh, land masses and continents. You can kind of see how they fit together, but also from fossil remains um, found in some of the different continents. Uh, you can see here uh, similar fossils found along stretches of different continents that now are separated, um, but point to all of this being uh, together as one land mass previously. And so here's kind of a picture of how they would have all fit together here. And, um, and I had mentioned the history of plate tectonic theory uh, and people seeing that um, the coast of South America uh, really kind of looked like it fit together with the coast of Africa. And so this is kind of a Pangaea um, with the different land masses uh, that we currently have. And so what would have happened is somewhere along here, we would have had uh, what we talked about uh, in yesterday's lecture with um, divergent plates where you would have started with a rift valley uh, and magma pushing the uh, different plates apart um, and then forming a new ocean basin and eventually a mature ocean. Um, and so that's what actually what we see in the mid-Atlantic Ridge is one area in particular. And so this is kind of how it would have come apart. So you had Pangaea and then separating into Laurasia and uh, Gondwana and then eventually breaking up over millions of years into the current continents and to what we have today. Um, and the thing that we need to note, if we go back and look at our original picture here, is it's still moving. It, it, it's not stopped at what we currently have. And so scientists actually predict that as it continues to move, it's eventually going to form back into uh, one supercontinent again, which they refer to as Pangaea Proxima. Um, so this is kind of an idea of what it will look like. And this is not any time 
you know, in the future because in the near future, because uh, again, they're, they're moving very slowly. Um, but this is the projected over 250 million years. So the, the projected, uh, convergence of the plates once again. So what actually makes these uh, um, plates move? What, what is actually causing the, the tectonic movement? It actually goes to some physics. And if you remember, we talked about the difference between um, our, our different phases of matter being the amount of energy in the particles. But let's think about just one phase. So we have here chilled water and the particles, they're, they're, still, they're still fluid, but because it's colder, there's less energy and so they kind of tend to stay together. And then as it gets to room temperature, so you know around about 70, 72 degrees, you know they have kind of a, a little more energy, but still kind of in the same way. But if we heat that, you have the same volume, but the particles are starting to spread further apart, so it's less dense. So it becomes more dense as it cools and less dense as it heats. And so this is part of a process that's called convection. Uh, convection here is our vocabulary definition, is the circulation of particles within a material caused by differences in thermal energy and density. So even when we heat a liquid, it's not going to heat exactly the same. So if we put a flame on the bottom, you're going to see this part heating up faster than this part. So that's actually what's causing convection. And so we get a, a current. So as you heat the pot of water, the less dense hot water will rise to the top because it's less dense than the water around it and that it will cool and so then as it cools it goes back to the bottom and then that heats up and goes back to the top and so we're creating this circular current and it's happening all throughout this pot of water. Well the same thing happens in Earth's mantle. So just like we have a pot of water creating a convection current in the asthenosphere, we have convection currents. Now remember the asthenosphere um, is not rigid. It, it's semi-molten or plastic as we call it. So the, the particles will flow. Um, so it has more of a fluid feeling to it than what the, the tectonic plates or the, the lithosphere does. So you have heat and pressure at the core heating up parts of the mantle and they become less dense than the parts around it. So moving up, we have that kind of semi-fluid, semi-molten, and as it cools, it moves back down towards the core, heats up again. So we have, again, that convection current coming. So this is actually what it does within the mantle uh, underneath the lithosphere. You have what's called upwelling, similar to uplift. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Um, can cause magma to uh, be forced up in between plates, uh, creating a ridge. Uh, it will kind of bring the plates apart. Um, and so this is, you know, we see um, the, the uh, plates spreading and then subduction underneath the continental crust. Uh, but then uh, convection will cause the plates to move. But then we also have uh, what, what they refer to as slab pole. So when you see that subduction there, um, it, once it, it starts to come under the crust, the pressure will, will begin to pull this plate. And so now you don't just have this being uh, forced apart, you have it being pulled by subduction, which will then pull more material from the asthenosphere, creating more crust. So you have both of these processes at work uh, um, to move the plates. So that's why I said it was important for us to understand uh, the, the 
kind of the dynamics of the asthenosphere, knowing that it is semi-molten, that it is plastic, that it is not rigid like the lithosphere, and that allows for the convection currents, and it allows for the plates to move, just like if we had water being heated on a stove and we had blocks of wood, you would see them kind of move apart through the convection currents. That's exactly what we're seeing here with our tectonic plates.